Hello, my dear students. Today we will study the arthropods. Today's episode will talk about arthropods. So let's start. Arthropods have lived for hundreds of millions of years. Arthropods have adapted to nearly every environment in our world. You are probably familiar with them or with many of them, such as insects, spiders, crabs, and centipedes. Arthropods are the largest group of animals on Earth. Can you imagine that at least 75% of all animal species are arthropods? And here are some examples of arthropods like the prawn or shrimp, spiders, butterflies, the housefly, crab, cockroaches, scorpions, and centipedes. So what about the characteristics of arthropods? All arthropods share four characteristics. Number one, a segmented body with specialized parts. Number two, jointed limbs. Number three, an exoskeleton. And number four, a well-developed nervous system. Let's start by the segmented and the specialized body. Like any lead worms, arthropods are segmented. In some arthropods, such as centipedes, nearly every segment is identical. Only the segments that make up the head and the tail are different from the rest. But most species of arthropods have segments that include specialized structures such as wings, antennae, gills, pincers, or claws. During an arthropod's development, some segments grow together. This process forms three main body parts. So now we will talk about the body parts of arthropods. Number one, head. Number two, thorax. Number three, abdomen. Okay, and this is a picture to show us what are the three body parts of any arthropod? Head, thorax, abdomen. Okay, the jointed limbs. Jointed limbs give the arthropod their name, which is arthropods. Arthro means joint, pod means foot. So jointed limbs are legs or other body parts that bend at the joints. Having jointed limbs make it easier for arthropods to move. Arthropods also have a hard external skeleton, which is named exoskeleton. Arthropods have a hard outer covering. The hard external structure that covers the outside of the body is an exoskeleton. Exo because it is outside the body or covers the body from the outside. This structure is made of protein and a special substance called chitin. This structure is named, this structure is made of protein and a special substance named Chitin. An exoskeleton does the same of the things that an internal skeleton does. Like what? Let's see. Like your bones. It serves as a stiff frame that supports the body. It allows the animal to move as well. And arthropods muscles connected to different parts of the skeleton. When the muscles contract, they move the exoskeleton, which moves parts of the animal. This is how it makes the body of the animal moves. But the exoskeleton also has things that an internal skeleton does not do well. Like what? The exoskeleton acts like a suit of armor to protect organs inside the body. And the exoskeleton also keeps the water inside an animal's body. This feature allows arthropods to live on land without drying out, like this crab. This is, this is a species of crab named ghost crab. A ghost crab's exoskeleton protects its body from drying out on land. And then we will move to sensing surroundings. So we will talk about the nervous system. All arthropods have a head and a well-developed brain and the nerve cord. The nervous system receives information from sense organs, including eyes and bristles. Bristles like small stiff hairs. Some arthropods such as the tarantula, use external bristles to sense their surroundings. The bristles detect motion, vibration, pressure, and also chemicals. Then we move to the eyes. These are compound eyes. Some arthropods have a very simple eyes. These arthropods can detect light but cannot see images, so they will never form images. This is the simple eyes. But most arthropods have compound eyes. Okay, this is great. Arthropods that have compound eyes, like these are the eyes of a housefly, as you can see, it is, it can see images because uh, a compound eye 
is an eye that is made of many identical light sensitive units arranged together. If you zoom into this part, you will see that they are arranged together. These are light sensitive identical units. This fruit fly, for example, has two compound eyes. Then we will move to the most interesting part, the kinds of arthropods, the types of arthropods. Arthropods are classified by kinds of body parts they have. You can tell the difference between arthropods by looking at the number of legs, the number of eyes, and also the number of antennae they have. What is an antenna? Antenna is the, four, is the part attached to the head. It's a feeler that senses touch, taste, and smell. That senses touch, taste, and smell. Okay. Okay, guys, so let's move on. This is centipedes and millipedes, the first part or the first type of arthropods. This is a centipede to the right and the millipede to the left. Let's see. Centipedes and millipedes have one pair of antennae, as we can see. Yes, this is one pair of antennae on the head and a hard head and one pair of mandibles. What are mandibles? Like the ones that you can see on this end, these are mandibles and also the mouth parts of these grasshopper. So mandibles are mouth parts that can pierce and chew food. One way to tell these animals apart is to count the number of legs on each segment. Okay, centipedes have one pair of legs in each segment. They can have 30 to 354 legs. Millipedes have two pairs of legs on each segment. The record the number of legs on a millipede is 752. Whoa, can you imagine this? So the upper one is a millipede, have two legs, two pairs of legs on each segment, but centipedes have only one pair of legs on each segment. The second type of arthropods are crustaceans. We are most familiar with these ones, the crabs and lobsters, even the shrimp. Shrimps, barnacles, crabs, and lobsters are crustaceans. They live in the water. Crustaceans have gills for breathing in the water for sure, Crustaceans have mandibles for eating and the two compound eyes. Each eye is located on the end of an eye stalk. Unlike other arthropods, crustaceans have two pairs of antennae. This is something to differentiate crustaceans from other arthropods. The lobster's gills are located under the exoskeleton. Then we move to the third type of arthropods, which are arachnids. arachnids. Arachnids like what? Arachnids like ticks, scorpions, spiders, and mites. Spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites, these are arachnids. What about the arachnids? What is special about arachnids? They have two main body parts. The head and the thorax, they are combined in one segment named cephalothorax. The word cephalon in Latin word, word cephalon means head. So number one, a cephalothorax and abdomen. The cephalothorax is made of both a head and a thorax. Most arachnids have four pairs of legs. Arachnids also have no antennae. This is to differentiate the arachnids. Instead of mandibles, arachnids have a pair of claw-like mouth parts called chelicera. 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 These ones are named chelicera. It looks like a claw. Instead of compound eyes, arachnids have simple eyes, but the number of the eyes varies. Some spiders have eight eyes. Also, also arachnids, although some people fear spiders, these arachnids are more helpful than harmful. A few, a few kinds of spider bites do need medical treatment, but the chelicera of many spiders cannot even pierce the human skin, so nothing to be worried about. Spiders usually use their chelicera to catch small insects. Spiders kill more insect pests than any other animal does. Then we come to ticks. Can you get the size of the tick regarding to or compared it to the tip of a finger? Ticks live in forest bushy areas and even grassy lawns. Ticks' bodies can be just a few millimeters long. The segments of these small bodies are joined as one part. Ticks are parasites that use chelicera to slice into a host's skin. Then these parasites attach on the host and feed on its blood. So it sucks the blood. 
A few ticks can bite humans can carry diseases such as the Lyme disease. But most people who are bitten by ticks, it's okay, do not get sick. Then we move to the last type of arthropods. First, we talked about centipedes and millipedes, the ones that look like worms, but with many legs. Then we moved to crustaceans, the ones that live in the water. Then arachnids, like spiders and scorpions. This is the last type of arthropods, which are insects. Like all this one that you can see, you, you, you already know the butterflies, the grasshoppers or the dragonfly mosquitoes and so on. So let's move on. Okay, insects make up the largest group of arthropods. If you put all the insects in the world together, they would weigh more than all the other animals combined. Can you imagine this? Although, the in, all, although all insects look different, they all have three main body parts, six legs and the two antennae. Insects live on land, in fresh water and on ocean surfaces. So the only place on earth where insects do not live is in the ocean, in the water itself. Many insects are helpful. Most of flowering plants depend on, on insects to carry pollen between plants like the bees. Farmers depend on insects to pollinate fruit crops, but some insects are pests. They are harmful that destroy the crops and spread disease. Other insects, such as fleas, mosquitoes, uh, bite us and suck our blood. The insect body. The insect bodies have three main parts, head, thorax, abdomen. Okay. On the head, insects have one pair of antennae, as we said, one pair of compound eyes and the mandibles for eating the food. The thorax, the thorax is made of three segments, each of which has one pair of legs. So this is... It has six legs attached to its thorax. Some insects have no wings, while other insects may have one or two pairs of wings on the thorax. Then we come to um, um, the very important part, which is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, an insect, as an insect develops, it changes form. This process is called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a phase in the life cycle of many animals during which a rapid change from the immature form of an organism to the adult form takes place. We have two types of metamorphosis, complete and incomplete. Most insects go through a complete change called complete metamorphosis. The complete metamorphosis have, has four stages, which are egg, larva, pupa, adult. Let's see the difference between them. Butterflies, beetles, flies, also bees, wasps, and ants, all these undergo complete metamorphosis. This is what happens during the life cycle of a butterfly to see what is a complete metamorphosis, a complete change in the shape and internal organs of the animal from the immature form to the adult one. Let's start by the adult butterfly. An adult lays eggs and embryo forms inside each egg. Okay, then a larva hatches from the egg. Butterfly and the moth larvae, they are called the caterpillars. This worm, this is called the caterpillar. This is the larvae of butterfly and moth. The caterpillar eats leaves and grows rapidly. As the caterpillar grows, it sheds its outer layer several times. This process is called molting. So molting is the process of shedding the outer layer of an animal several times. Then after its final molt, the caterpillar makes a chrysalis and becomes a pupa. The pupal stage may last a few days only or several months. During this stage, the insect is inactive. Then moving to the adult, the adult body parts replace the larval body parts. The adult splits the chrysalis and come out. Then the adult butterfly pumps blood like fluid into its wings. Until they are full sized, the butterfly is now ready to fly. As you can see, this is a complete metamorphosis. Then let's, look about, let's talk about the incomplete metamorphosis. Grasshoppers and cockroaches are some of the insects that go through incomplete metamorphosis, grasshoppers and the cockroaches. Incomplete metamorphosis is less complicated than complete metamorphosis. 
It has only three main stages, egg, nymph, adult. As you can see, this is the difference between them. This is the adult lays eggs. The eggs hatch into a small individual, exactly like the adult form, but smaller in size and without wings. Some nymphs shed their exoskeleton several times in a process called molting. An insect in the nymph stage looks very much like an adult insect, but a nymph does not have wings and is very small. Through molting, it develops into an adult. Okay, and this is the, the simple life cycle of an insect or a, it's a grasshopper or even the cockroach in an incomplete metamorphosis. I hope you understood all arthropods and see you in the next episode. Thank you. Goodbye.